We are back at Boston Rock Talk. Lucius, having performed three wonderful songs that I couldn't throw a genre net around if I had to. Jess and Holly. Dan. Dan. Pete. Peter. Andrew are here, here with us today. If you had to throw a genre net around what you guys do, could you do it? No, it's the hardest question that we're asked. Probably. We'd like to start with the hardest question. <laughs> yeah. um, no, and I, I think that all of us sort of pride ourselves on not having to do that. It's uh, it's a dynamic group with a lot of energy, and there's pop songs, and there's soul soulfulness, and there's folk elements, and it's just sort of it's a, a meeting of many worlds. Mm -hmm. just writing songs that feel good to sing and um, hopefully are meaningful, and you know we don't really think about it having to be fitting in one box. Let's, I guess, start for people who don't know too much about the band yet, about the uh, the genesis of it. I know you two met at Berkeley College of Music, and I think you guys did as well mm -hmm. at, in a More different period yeah. of time. You want to talk about how you got together first and then how it mutated into uh, what it mutated into? Yeah, uh, we met at school in um, 2003, I guess it was. So uh, a couple years into school, we started writing songs together, and we were working under the name Lucius um, from the very beginning. And uh, and it just kind of, we just kept writing. We had no real plan of what we were doing, but um, we just kept going with it. And then when we moved to New York, we started going to, uh, you know, open mics and songwriting things, getting into the different circles and um, perfecting our, our songs. And then we were playing out a little bit with different musicians and we had met you at City Winery? I mean... Something like that. And we did a gig there, and he was looking to start working on productions. Well, I mean, you can say. Oh, well, uh, Jess and Holly had made a record under the name Lucius, mm -hmm. uh, Songs from the Bromley House, mm -hmm. and they had mentioned to me that they wanted to try and do something different, something a little more upbeat, something that they could, I think, what the words they used was dance on stage too. <laughs> <laughs> Are those the words we yeah. use? Uh, <laughs> dance on stage. That sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, I was like, all right, I'll help you guys dance. And, uh, <laughs> so we started working on what later became Wilda Woman. Mm -hmm. and that yeah. was 2010. Yeah. yeah, and you got roped into that. Yeah. And then, 2011, 2011. And then this guy we kind of stole from another musical project <laughs> that you were working on. Yeah. That's and, right. uh, and that's Were any of you thinking at this time, boy, you know what would be really nice is to marry one of the guys in the bands, too? I was thinking of the whole time. You were thinking of that? Yeah. yeah. Did it I work out? Just beat me up. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we should say, you married these two. Yeah. yeah. Um, the band is, you formed, I guess, you sort of took shape in Brooklyn, but uh, three of you, I think, live in L.A. now, right? Is that basically mm -hmm. it? Does that, how does that work? I mean, it's sort of two uh, sides of the U.S. in terms of material. Does it matter that you're not all in one place? Not anymore. I mean, we're gone so much. We're on the road f for such a long time that it's just about finding a meeting spot. So usually these two will, will join us out in Los Angeles for rehearsals, mm -hmm. and then we'll leave all together for tour. Which is really nice for the winter time when we have to go to Los Angeles. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good thing to yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. The, the songwriting process, um, Jess, you told me a little bit about this before, but it's like, I think, you two come up with the basics, the uh, demo versions, words, melody, and then you kind of kick it over to them, and then it gets luciusified, or however mm -hmm. you do it. T tell people a little bit about the process. Yeah, I mean, uh, Holly and I do the initial songwriting uh, lyrics and melody and make our own sort of baby demos mm -hmm. uh, together, just sort of... Um, and then the guys are all so individually songwriters and uh, incredible musicians. And so we send off our baby demos to them and they sort of make um, anti-demos. Get to have our boys club. <laughs> boys, <right. laughs> the three of them work together. And also it's a time for them to sit with the songs without us being there and sort of like telling them what right. not to do or what to do, <laughs> uh, bossing them around. Um, so it's it's a really nice opportunity to have them make their mark because and they really do i mean sometimes sometimes the songs change dramatically and sometimes they stay near or exactly as we wrote them so it's just it's a it's sort of a 
it's sort of all fair, you know, anything goes. And then we all get into the studio together and we pick up and choose the best parts of both. So you guys aren't protective of what you've come up with, saying that it's got to be exactly this way. You I think certain songs have, have, song. felt, yeah. Yeah. have felt like mm -hmm. they needed to stay in a certain realm. And then other songs, we never would have imagined them going a certain route. And then, you know, once you... We, we have trust in each other, mm -hmm. so, I mean, we're musical partners, so uh, to give them our baby and let that, and see what, you know, where, where it goes. For a walk. <laughs> Get it to the toddler stage. Yeah. And, 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 Andy uses a leash on my child. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the new album is called Good Grief, and I mean, mm -hmm. I knew that expression because I read Peanuts, the comic strip mm -hmm. for years. Was that in your heads at all, the Peanuts strip? Or no, not at no. the least. Do you know of it? Yes. The expression you do now, okay. Um, but so, the, but the meaning, obviously, I think, from listening to it, is uh, grief can be good. I think grief can be good. Grief saying. can be embraced. It's necessary in order to uh, see the light. Mm -hmm. You know, to appreciate the joys. You ha sometimes have to go through difficult moments or times, and 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 we did. We were on the road for a really long time and it was trying on our relationships and our families and it was hard on ourselves. We didn't have a lot of alone time and not a lot of time to reflect. I mean, I think we had 21 non-consecutive days off in 2014. It was really crazy. But at the same time, we were seeing the world and traveling together and experiencing all these mm -hmm. momentous occasions. So it was sort of, um, I don't know, pretty extreme opposite feelings. And I think uh, we learned a whole lot and, and had a lot to, to say about it. The theme of madness and insanity kind of surfaces in the record in a couple of points. Um, that is a result, perhaps, of that kind <laughs> of, uh, well, I think, you know, both the isolation of touring and yet being in the public eye. Mm -hmm. maybe, that kind of. Yeah, I think also <clears throat> it is weird on your mind and your body to have this, like, when you're playing on stage for an hour and a half every night, there you have this intense rush, rush of adrenaline mm -hmm. and serotonin, like all the amazing feelings and so much feedback from the audience, and it's just like this higher high than you would ever experience in in another situation. Mm -hmm. So, the, so when you step off the stage, you can your body kind of balances with a lower low than you might normally experience. Yeah. So it, there is this sort of bipolarity within your days, and it's it's like a balancing act a little bit. And I think that the record was sort of a result of that. You know, we wrote these songs that were kind of heavier and then we were like, okay, we need to remedy these <laughs> with some something uplifting. And it ended up being very similar to what it felt like. Right. Let's talk about the image, the sort of mirror image that you guys uh, do. Uh, people confuse you as being twins, I think, or cousins or whatever. Um, when did you come up with this idea, this look, and how often does it change? Um, it changes whenever we mm -hmm. come up with a new idea, mm -hmm. um, or or if the sound changes. I think it just develops as we go. Um, we're constantly collecting um, clothes, clothes, <laughs> and ideas. Hopefully, <laughs> both. Um, it started. You know, we. we we grew up listening to a lot of 60s rock and roll and old school soul music. And, it, you know, in the 60s and 70s, it was just a part of what they did. I mean, mm -hmm. David Bowie and Prince and um, pretty much everyone. I mean, Sam Cooke, Elvis, you know, most of our influences had some um, visual representation of their music. Were, were you Kate Bush fans, too? I'm Absolutely. guessing. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Sure. Um, and I think... For us, we wanted to create a space and a sort of a, an environment to sit in. And also, it was an automatic unifier um, for us. Before we even got on stage, we are, we are a unit. And when you look at us, I think you think of it, us as a unit and not individuals. Not that we're not. We're very different people. And we have different voices, actually, apart. But when we're together and, and what this band is about... Um, it's very much about all of us. And you're, you're always in unison singing, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty much? 
No, we we no, split off in a some, harmony. Some harmony yeah, sometimes. Yeah, okay, it's hard to tell sometimes. It's so close. It's that, um, do you when you're singing the lyrics and writing the lyrics? Obviously, uh, do you both have to come to terms with what is being sung? In other words, agree with what the message is? Do you ever have any conflicts about that? No, we wouldn't sing this. This isn't us. Um, I think it's become sort of a conversation. It's like talking to your friend, you know, when we get together to write. So in that way, you can kind of either it feels very personal or you can relate and you feel like you're just talking with your friend. I don't know how else to describe it. Right. And also right. we see each other's experiences. I mean, we're together every single moment <laughs> of every day, basically. So, uh, in, in, you know, we're able to talk on behalf of the other or at least be able to understand it from such a deeper level than a normal uh, partnership would, I think. Are, are the songs things that necessarily happen to you or are they more fictional constructs? Depends on the, depends. Depends on the yeah. song, yeah. Depends on the song. <laughs> <laughs> Let people guess if they if they wish, because I think I mean part of the things you things you do that is uh, really cool is that kind of mystery about you, and the image works into that, the way you sing works into that, and of course the diversity of the material works into that. It's like where are these people coming from? And then of course there's also that sort of like okay, you two are the the front people, obviously, looking at each other, which is unusual, and then you guys are like, I mean, how do these guys factor into that mix? So it's a pretty cool I mean thing to look at visually, I think. Uh, as well as from an audio point of view. Um, just the singing together, facing each other. How about that? Whose idea? And... I don't remember. Was it yours? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You take credit as, as for it. Huffs, <laughs> as he huffs and puffs behind me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, initially, I, I, I mean, I, I mean the, the kind of element of duality was always, you know, it became a theme, and it just kind of kept on expanding and expanding you know initially it was just the idea of there was two voices then it turned into well what if we were the same thing what if we both played keyboards what if there were two drummers what if there were two guitar players two bass players and there's literally two of everything in the group and something about that ended up kind of like what if we tried this sort of like v-shaped thing with the whole group mm -hmm. where Pete kind of sits in the center and the girls are kind of facing each other but at an angle and Andy and I are kind of facing each other at an angle and uh, what, was, what was the initial like I, well I wanted setup. to have like a keyboard stand that sort of folded up like this but standing up yeah so that it would kind of pack like this and then open up and then they could fan out and face each other but then it sort of just became what it was which is just two separate keyboards. The, the setup's very yeah. unconventional, and everything's kind of <laughs> everything's kind of come about like it's evolved in in weird like yeah. the drum thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that was an that. accident in our apartment. Yeah. During rehearsal. Oh. The the people below us were complaining about how much noise we were making, and so we turned his drum. They would like side. hit the floor with a broom every time we were rehearsing. Oh, understandably so. And, you must uh, be good tennis. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, how no, do you just, just, how do you solve that? What is the only thing that seemed to bother the neighbor <laughs> below us was when there was a kick drum, and so I thought, well, let's let's just I'll yeah. just play a tom and play standing up, mm -hmm. and they were never knocking on the ceiling anymore, and then so we were rehearsing like that for weeks, and then it came time to play a show, and we we're like, well, what? let's just <laughs> perform that way. I love I love that band sound because of neighbors being irritated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is a, that is a great influence. Never saw those guys again, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> the neighbors disappeared. You guys are uh, I mean, from what I can gather here, I mean, you're in the midst of a huge tour of fifty some odd dates, I think, right now, uh, and most of them are what I'm seeing selling out. There would be the feeling that you're uh, on the move, uh, grasping a wave of some big sort. Do you get that picture? Do you have that feeling of like? we are really on the way at this point? You know, it's hard to get a gauge when you're in it. I feel like there's definitely excitement and obviously, you know, we have such a wonderful community of people that is supporting us and, um, you know, uh, urging us to keep, to keep going and we're really excited about the prospects. But uh, it's really hard to know what is, yeah. you know, we're in, we're in it. Like so. day, day to day, I'm more concerned if there's going to be laundry at the venue. Right, <laughs> sure, sure. sure. But it's also important just to focus on the music, focus on what you're doing and not be distracted by 
whether people are giving you compliments or insults, just, you know, do what you do and, mm -hmm. and just focus on making good art, hopefully. Try to keep blinders on in yeah. a certain way and yeah. just kind of pursue that single-mindedness. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to be playing us out with Born Again Teen, which is the hit, the single at the moment. And... Um, one of the catchiest, most fun songs I've heard in some time. Um, do you guys happen to remember a song called Kids in America by Kim Wilde? We're the kids in America. Uh, oh. yeah. yeah. That's uh, early 80s, so before you guys were even on the planet, really. Uh, it, that, it reminded me of that. It is so exuberant, and so it's sort of a fantasy song. I think yours is as well, mm -hmm. and hers is. She's a Brit, and she was singing about how wonderful it would be to be a kid in America. And your song has that same kind of force to me. But anyway, um, the question is, uh, since you're not teens anymore and you, in the song, want to be born again teens, what are you going back to? What are you trying to convey to people here? I think it's going back, having experienced all that we have now that we, because going back to what my experience was as a teenager, <laughs> and I know Holly feels the same, is not something I'd want to go back to. <laughs> But just, it's that idea of freedom and uh, irresponsibility, mm -hmm. um, yeah. carefree nature that sounds pretty nice. What were your teen years like? I mean, were you more reclusive or...? or uh... Just not... I, w I didn't really feel a part of a community, you know, mm -hmm. until I moved to Boston and went to school and had like-minded people around me. It was... It was rough, you know, as an artist, and um, there was I, I didn't truly feel nurtured in that in that environment that I was in. So um, that's what it was like for same me. Same for you, Holly. Same kind of. Yeah, I mean, I was really quiet in school, and I was a creative, kind of weird kid, and like I was my teacher. A lot of my teachers didn't like me, and kids, I didn't talk to kids a lot. I don't know. It was weird for me. <laughs> Actually, I <laughs> somebody just nominated me for my high school wall of fame, and my teacher that hated me in high school denied it. I got denied on my high school wall when, of fame. When did this happen? <laughs> Two days ago. <laughs> I would say that's a success. <laughs> that is yeah. wonderful. Yeah. That is, yeah. it, uh, why were you so hated? <laughs> <laughs> Oh but my God! Anyway, wow. Here we are. Well, <laughs> you. all right. How about you guys? Were you popular teens or were you outcasts? I feel like Burry was popular. Yeah, I you had were a great time. <laughs> <laughs> Burry always has a great time. I think we probably all had similar. I mean, you got to be around a lot of musicians, like a well. Yeah. You talk about that. No, I mean, I was. I, I I felt a little bit like an outcast too, but I had good friends. But I was. I went to this performing arts high school and. I was actually there for theater, and I always would skip theater and like hang out with all the jazz kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then my theater teachers would come and like fetch me, and eventually got kicked out of that school for <laughs> skipping class all the time. So I was somewhat of an outcast as well, I guess. Well, I rock like, and roll is the best revenge, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, I, totally. You get to, well, you get the whole thing is about reinvention, I think, in a way. I mean, everybody starts as a kid. You don't know what you're going to become or what you want to become. And I would think when you find it, which I guess you have, there's got to be a feeling of now we're in our comfort zone. Would that be fair to say? I think so. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I <laughs> well, except for you. <laughs> I think also the idea of a comfort zone, you know, like you were asking about the genre and stuff. Yeah. Like that to me translates to being like, well, we have a sound that we do over and over. And I think that we, there's a certain part of us that likes to be thrown into uncomfortable situations. Right, right. You know, there's like a, there's a thrill to that because I think also in the setup in the band and the way that it is on stage, if one thing goes wrong or if one person isn't, we're all affected. We're all it. juggling this ball, and so there's like a. I think we thrive in the. All right, I gotta ask, what's the worst thing that's happened on stage? Oh, worst. It well, it's never really. A, I don't think it's apparent to the audience mm -hmm. when it's the worst thing that's happened on stage. Yeah. Like if something, I guess I should say that the ball is always being juggled. So if something does go wrong, since there are two of everything, there's always someone to kind of pick up the yeah. pieces. Uh, and that is a pretty good feeling because if you're the guitar player that 
his guitar breaks that night, you won't get fired from the gig because <laughs> there's someone to back you up, you know, or if you're... <laughs> Very good. You've got tenure. You've got Lucius yeah, tenure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we worked hard. And, uh, <laughs> sit back in our chairs with our <laughs> professor jackets on. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Right. Well, that's great. Guys, thank you for... Uh, being here, you're going to play us out Thanks. with uh, Born Again Team, and uh, you will be, I'm guessing, jumping up and down a little bit and being very happy. So thank you for joining us here on Boston Rock Talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much.